Whew. Okay. Wow. <laughs> SmackDown, SmackDown, SmackDown. What do I have to say about SmackDown tonight? Wow, this this was a fun show to watch. This was a great go home show to watch. Okay, this was better than what I saw last night on Monday Night Raw with that garbage show of a go home show. And SmackDown was just killing it tonight. Other than the main event with Andrade, I'm just I gotta say Andrade. I can't say Cian Almas because they want to take his name away for some dumb reason. <clears throat> excuse me, versus Rey Mysterio, and I'm going to get to that main event later on, because that was a very fun match to watch, but, uh, other than the main, you know, the main event tonight, there was still a lot going on, a lot of really good things going on, a couple bad things here and there for SmackDown, but overall, I thought this was a really great go-home show, okay, it still has a little bit of its detractors, though, that kind of kept it going down, if you ask to me, but kick it off the show for SmackDown tonight, uh, Wichita, Kansas, uh, really good crowd tonight, too. I will say they were better than um, Oklahoma City last night, um, OKC. And uh, Kansas was a pretty pretty better crowd, I will say that. A little bit more livelier out there. Uh, we did kick, pretty much kicked off the show with Becky Lynch. Of course, Becky's over. A lot of Becky chants. As, you know, she talked about it wasn't long ago and no one was paying attention to her. But now... There's only one place she's going now, and that is the main event of WrestleMania. I don't really see how that's supposed to happen, really, because uh, even I saw somebody point this out on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> is Becky Lynch in the um, the guys Royal Rumble now? Because uh, um, I'm wondering how are you main event WrestleMania, and you're not even in the Royal Rumble, or just main event WrestleMania in general. And you know, I've said this in the past about you know the whole Royal Rumble thing, because you know it's been rumors about the women main event in WrestleMania and stuff. Uh, you know, I'm still not sold on that idea in a way, um, like some other people are. Like I said, I'm still not 100% on it, because, uh, you know, WWE just done this thing in the past where they do this first time ever, first time ever, first time ever. It's always about first time ever. It's like they try to push that, but make sure it's great than just doing the first ever this, first ever that, because WWE has done this a lot, and especially with the women nowadays lately, too, because it's almost like they've, you know, they've, they've overexposed it too much, if you ask me, and... Here's another thing, too, and this is kind of, I'm going to get into Becky's promo in a second, but the guy said it's near the end also, because the, the commentators are saying that whoever wins the Women's Royal Rumble will main event WrestleMania and pick the champion they're choosing. But later in the main event, they say whoever wins the Guys Royal Rumble gets to pick the winner, you know, you know, the winner, not, not winner, whoever wins the Guys Royal Rumble gets to pick the champion they're choosing, and they will main event WrestleMania, so, I don't know what the memo was for that be, or when they said the women were gonna main event WrestleMania, until, like, they just saying this now, I don't know why, and didn't really have a memo about this, so, I'm not even sure if that was true in that, because they kind of said it for the Guys Royal Rumble, too, so, I'm just gonna assume whoever wins the Guys Royal Rumble is just gonna still main event WrestleMania, the, but, like I said, there's been rumors that the women are going to main event WrestleMania. Well, one's because Ronda, and they, I'm sure they want her to do it. Cause, and I know they probably would make a big, lot of big payday off of this, too. But I'm not 100% sure if that's going to happen in that. But it's almost like you're saying this is the, they're going to main event, and they're going to main event. So I just kind of thought about that when, you know, Becky brought it up. Even the commentators also. But pretty much Becky says she would slap anyone in her way. That try, you know, in her way of her trying to get to the main event WrestleMania. But then she went to Asuka talking about her. That Asuka, you know, she has steamrolled her way since NXT over everybody. And that she's the champion. But she said that you have never beaten me as champion. And that Becky says she is better than Asuka. That she is already the throne of the queen. And that she would break the Empress this Sunday. Asuka came out. Pretty much held the title up over uh, Becky. Of course, there were Becky chants out there then. Charlotte then came out, which Charlotte seems to interject herself in a lot of these things. of still coming for the title, even though we know she's in the Rumble, which is an odds-on favorite right now, as people are saying, which she may win the Rumble, because that's been heavily rumored. And I look at all those women on that horrible Bliss segment last night, making you tell you now they are not going to, none of them have no chance of winning the Rumble, okay? They don't have a fucking chance. I'll, I can tell you that right now. But, um, pretty much Charlotte said, you know, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be more exciting than throwing 29 women over the, 
the top rope at the Rumble, but she talked about she's beaten Sasha, Ronda, both Asuka and Becky in the past, and she has been the head of this division for four years now, and that she will beat one of them at WrestleMania when she wins the Rumble. Becky Chance pretty much tries to drown out Charlotte then after that, and she said that she is the main event. Asuka tried to jump Becky from behind, referees and agents came out to stop it then. After that, um, after they, um, you know, they, they were trying to stop it, Asuka was able to throw Becky into the barricade then, but Becky came back, taking off her jacket, started beating Asuka with it then, throwing over the announce table, and then jumping off the announce table onto her then. Pretty much even still fighting after commercial, brawling with each other. You know, they get that serial commercial on the way too, but after they brawled with each other then, they did they, were, they then went to Mandy Rose versus Naomi, which, to what I've heard since last week that the reason why this whole feud is happening with them and Jimmy Uso being involved is to promote that Temptation Island I think that comes on after Smackdown of will Uso cheat will he cheat is he tempted and they've had like this like you know I think they had a woman like you know narrate this whole story this whole love triangle thing going on like it was some type of soap opera going on I was like even they may be doing that as the intro for the Temptation Island. Like, will he tempt or something in the hotel room and stuff. So, uh, they had a whole kind of big production into this. Pretty much as they came out for the entrances then, Mandy Rose came out after Naomi. Um, kind of like had a graphic too. Naomi pretty much jumps out of the ring and Mandy tried to use, um, I suppose she tried to use uh, Sonya Deville as a shield. And it sounds like Naomi just ran out there and said, you know, move bitch, get out the way. And went in on Mandy Rose then after that as, um... Um, you know, she pretty much attacked her. Uh, I, I hate those stupid commercial things with the ads when they do it side by side. But, like, Naomi was kind of, you know, pretty much dominating in this match, really. I, I'll say that right now. Uh, they did botch a couple moves. Right, I did see that botch face buster. I saw that go down. The finish was weak to me. I'll tell you that right now. I, I didn't really like the finish. And I guess it was a distraction thing because, you know, Naomi went outside the ring. And, you know... As she was on the apron and was gonna pretty much gonna do a springboard, Mandy Rose pretty much went to the referee, causing Sonya Deville to try to grab her leg. Naomi kicked her off. Mandy pretty much throws her into the ring post, rolls her into the ring, and pins her. No finish, nothing. Just rolls her and pins her. It just it made Naomi look, Naomi look kind of weak. All right, it, it looked like a weak finish. I didn't really like it. That I didn't I didn't really like this match in general. It was okay for what it was and kind of maybe passable, but. You know, Jimmy Uso tried to come out with Naomi then after that, pretty much helping her up. I'm assuming this feud is not over with these two, so I kind of expect it to still go on because of the distractions and everything. But the finish was very weak to me with the whole turnbuckle being knocked into. But moving on after that, um, Rey Mysterio cut a promo about... Andrade in the back, and pretty much that tonight will be about respect. Shane McMahon and The Miz came out then as they were, you know, Miz was about to go one-on-one with Cesaro. Uh, the match was pretty much okay. Uh, Cesaro does a lot of uppercuts, of course. Uh, pretty much, um, like I said, this, this match, it was okay for what it was, but it pretty much ended up with, you know, Shane McMahon trying to get involved. Sheamus uh, knocked Shane to the barricade. Sheamus, uh, well, Cesaro had... Miz on the ropes. Sheamus Williams came in with a kick as the referee was distracted. Cesaro hit the neutralizer. And then after that, Shane McMahon and his 1,000 punches and only hits five of them. You know, just just doing this all the time. Knocking Sheamus to the barricade. Trying to box Cesaro. Uh, Looked like he tried to botch him going into the turnbuckle. Throws him on the announce desk. Of course, Shane's going to do his jump from the top rope onto the announce table because that's his biggest move. But Sheamus knocked him into the floor then after that. Bro kick Shane. And Miz tried to use himself as a human shield for uh, Shane McMahon out there to cover him. But they threw Miz on the table. And I actually thought this was pretty cool. They both, the bar, they pick up Shane like by almost like a power bomb by his arms and leg on each side. Hoist him up into the air and double power bombs the guy right into the table. Pretty much collapsing the whole thing. Knocking both of it down. this thing on 
<laughs> yeah, phone call right there. But um, as I was saying, um, like I said, hoist him up into the air and double power bombs the guy right into the ground. I'm sorry, into the announce table after that, which looked pretty brutal. I will give them that. But judging of what I saw right here, this pretty much tells me that Shane McMahon and The Miz are going to win the tag titles this Sunday. They pretty much bury both these tag divisions on both shows, especially Monday Night Raw. But... What I saw with the bar getting the big beat down on Shane and Miz, they're, they're, dude, it's either Shane and Shane and Miz are gonna win the championships on Sunday, or one's gonna turn on the other, and it'll be some match at WrestleMania with Shane McMahon and the Miz. I don't think anybody really wants to see that, to be honest. I'm, I wouldn't really look forward to it at all. But they would go on and pull off some stuff like this. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they did that. So. I'm not really looking forward to it, but I can really bet my top dollar right now that um, The Miz and Shane McMahon are going to win the championships this Sunday just because they got the crap kicked out of them tonight and Shane went flying in the air on top of Miz onto the announce table and everything. Um, they then went to a video package, well, after, you know, as the referees were helping Shane them up. So a really great video package with Mustafa Ali. If you watch 205 Live, you can see what they've done with Mustafa Ali's promos on there and why, they, you know, it was really, really great, you know, pre-tape, uh, video. Because it was pretty much him, I think it was in the cold somewhere, talking about, you know, a history of him being a cop in the streets of Chicago and how he, you know, helped them understand people. And all he needs to do is just look in their eyes. And he looked in Joe's eyes because Joe looked at him like he didn't belong here. But, you know, you, you need to look in his eyes because he has the confidence and he has the light. And it was a really great promo also that he can beat Samoa Joe. So a very great um, promo package for Mustafa Ali. Just a great promo in general for, for, him in gen, for him in general. And I did like how the video went. Like I said, if you watch what he's done 205 Live, those are pretty much the same videos they do for him over there. So a very great promo for him. Vince McMahon was pretty much watching backstage what happened to Shane McMahon then as Vince came out. As he kind of said what happened to uh, you know, Shane and Miz. And that's going to be a great tag match this Sunday when they go against the bar with a lot on the line. But, but Vince McMahon was out here to be the moderator for AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan came out, but he didn't want to get in the ring for this whole face-to-face -face thing. He called AJ Styles a sociopath and that he was slammed on animal carcasses last week. That AJ just wants to get people fat off hot dogs so they can buy his merchandise and become walking billboards. And that he's using his fame and power to obtain money and wealth. But Daniel Bryan's using his for the greater good and everything. Uh, AJ pretty much called him, you talk like a jackass and stuff, but Brian says, you know, you make me laugh, okay? You're ignorant and that, you know, that they're fickle and that you're just making this crowd waste their time. You will never take the WWE Championship away from me because I'm not just the people's champion, as Daniel Bryan says. He is the planet's champion and it needs him. Of course, Daniel Bryan doing his whole, you know environmentalist, angry environmentalist promo, but AJ said, hey, I didn't ride a bike or pedal here to the arena, okay? I got on a plane like everybody else, so you're fickle also, as he says. And pretty much they start calling Brian fickle. Brian told him to shut up. AJ pretty much says, you're afraid to get in the ring with me because right now the only thing that matters to him is the WWE Championship. And before Brian, he said this, I like the... Talk about Carl something was this Carl Nar Narks, I believe he was about to quote someone else, but I actually thought this part was funny. Vince was right, that's enough. Get in the ring. I've heard enough. I'm tired of this get in the ring. I don't want to hear you quote nobody or whatever you're talking about out here. And the fans will start chanting, Yes, 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 yes. I for some reason I thought that was really funny because Vince is like, No. I I'm done hearing this. Get in the ring. Heard enough. I don't want to hear you quote whoever the crap you're talking about, get in. But Brian then pretty much went in on Vince then, which was almost like a truth promo when you think about it. He's actually telling the truth out here. Talking about Vince McMahon accusing him of his generation, this baby, baby boomer generation that you're all just parasites. You take, you take, you take everything away from everyone and you don't give it back that you all are just killing the environment and everything. He's talking about the, the whole economic environment that you're just profiting off of these people and stuff that you have this magic trick that why do these people bow down to you huh why do they bow down to you and sing your song and always just talk on social media from facebook and 
you know, Instagram posts because you've made a way to make profit. You just hoard all the money, he says, and you're killing the environment, just hoarding all the money, and you make this this whole environment just a place for AJ just to become a hero around here. But Vince McMahon pretty much started pissed like, damn it, I've heard enough. Get in the damn ring. I heard enough of you, okay? Get in the ring. But Brian's promo, I, I, like I said, the guy is an angry environmentalist of him complaining most of the time. That's what I usually keep calling him. But um, this was still a great promo to what he said about Vince McMahon. You know, Vince was just sitting in, taking it. Some, And I didn't want to compare it that much, but I almost thought like, it's almost like when they had Paul Heyman shoot on uh, Vince in the ring years ago in the Attitude Era in a way. Because this was some truth, um, you know, Brian was talking about AJ Styles out here, okay? So it was pretty pretty good. Um but pretty much then after that, he told Brian to get in the ring. AJ Styles said, you know, face to face, I'll go with him right now, okay? And AJ got out of the ring then. AJ got out of the ring then, pretty much went after Brian. They brawled for a second. He's about to hit a phenomenal forearm, but Brian used Vince McMahon as a shield for a second. AJ didn't, you know, go in for the forearm, but Brian pretty much sidestepped Vince McMahon. Hits him with the running knee and, um, you know, pretty much held, holds the title up and walks back to the stage with it. But. Yeah. But pretty much then after that, you know, with him. Like I said, the, the promo was great. Like I said, he knocked down AJ and walked back to the stage. Just trying to get everything together here. But great promo by, um. Pretty much uh, by both AJ and Brian. If you don't like this whole little angry environmentalist thing, it was still good though. Even say what he said about Vince was fun to watch. Okay, this this was really um, it was really good. I, I will say that um, the promo because um, Brian just ranting on Vince McMahon that was just fun to watch. I still thought it was funny when uh, Vince said, "Get in the ring. I've heard enough. You're done. In the ring. Y you're done. Okay, you're done." Our truth and Carmelo then were talking about their dirty spots in the Royal Rumble. Uh, until, you know, Carmelo then went into um, Charlotte saying, you know, you're in the Royal Rumble, huh? Because, um, you know, she's number 30. And he says, you never been in one before. You weren't even in last year. She was the champion last year, moron. But um, <laughs> I'll say that because, like, what is she talking about? She was the champion. But Carmella says she is the gatekeeper in Gucci, but Charlotte says, I am the tornado, and they will bow down to the queen. Samoa Joe then went against Mustafa Ali. I didn't really think this match was happening tonight when they were from, I didn't know, because I didn't think it was tonight after the whole video package, but pretty good match, though, I will say that. Uh, Samoa Joe actually picking up a win once in a while. Uh, they are making Mustafa Ali, I will say they are building up, building him up relatively nice. You know, he's an underdog and everything, but, you know, the promo, just him showing great confidence, saying he can beat um, Samoa Joe. It was pretty good, though. Hit him with the Tornado DDT. He was going to go for the 054, but Samoa Joe knocked him off and um, pretty much hit him with the Coquina Clutch for the win um, after that. So, um, pretty good match. I will say that. It could continue in, on. I don't think this will be over because I don't know what happened with the Samoa Joe and Jeff Hardy feud. It's just like it just happened and went away and they just moved on to the next one, okay? That's pretty much what they uh, did there. So, this could keep going on. At least Samoa Joe got a win. Because usually I feel like when Samoa Joe is in these feuds, it's like, it's, he's good. He cuts a great promo and everything. But you know he's going to lose in the end of all these things. It's almost like you just know he's going to lose. And it's happened time and time again. So, at least he got a win right here. I don't think he's winning the Rumble, though, this Sunday. And I'll get into the end of, you know, when I get to the end of the show about that. Um, they then went to the New Day sitting around backstage. As, you know, they were looking at, um, I guess, past Royal Rumble videos with Kofi making the save. Caleb Braxton then pretty much to, you know, interview them. And they said, are you willing to eliminate each other? And Wood says, you guys ask us that question every year from Renee Young to Tom Phillips, everyone. Okay, who's next? Tony Ch But... This mute button works in handy, okay? This this mute button is really working well for me on this this microphone here. But um <clears throat> uh pretty much they said who's next? Tony Chimmo, which he actually does show up then, Chimmo, surprisingly. <laughs> and it was kind of funny because I'm like, Chimmo's here then, and they pretty much tell Chimmo to go away. He said, listen, Ed Edge isn't here, okay? You're not here to say no rated R superstar edge. It just wasn't going down, alright? No, there's no edge. 
there's no edge here tonight. So <laughs> I actually was surprised Tony Chimo actually uh, showed up then. Hold on a second. But, yeah, I was actually surprised Tony Chimmel did show up. Uh, Big E then called um, Caleb Braxton, Tommy Braxton, and um, said, you know, they're going to dog walk everybody to the Rumble. I, I kind of understood Big E's reference right there to what he was talking about. I actually did laugh at that because uh, I don't know. Everybody may not know what I'm talking about, but I guess it was some thing that happened the other day with, um, well, who was it? Um, Was it Cardi B and Tommy Lauren and... I remember, I, I know what he was talking about because of her. She was going to dog walk Tommy Lauren. If you don't believe me, look it up. It was like some Twitter feud going on because, listen, Tommy Lauren's just some fucking moron anyways. Don't believe me, look it up. I've seen it happen before on the Bre Breakfast Club. Okay, there's a reason why that girl is donkey of the day several repeated times. Just, just look at the stupid shit that, that girl said. I'm no Cardi B, B fan that much either, but uh, that dog walk line was pretty funny, though, and it was funny Big E used it, so I, I did laugh at that. Gonna dog walk, <laughs> called it Tommy Braxton. So, like I said, look look it up if you want to. But uh, Kofi then pretty much says, um, he pretty much was a little sad, saying, like, I don't know how I'm gonna keep my feet on the ground and shit. Hopefully they come with a more creative way this time, because they haven't been really creative when saving Kofi in the Rumble, but Big Ian was told him to keep his head up. They'll come up with a plan. I'd be like if Kofi Kings would actually win the Royal Rumble, but I don't think that's really gonna happen. But I'm sure he'll do some impossible save this Sunday. Main event time, Rey Mysterio versus Andrade, even though they had C and Alma still in Steam Song and then Titan Tron also. This match was insane and it was great and I loved it, okay? The match was just fun to watch, alright? It was very fun to watch. This was like pay-per-view quality. Again, you thought last week was great. This week was even better. Two out of three falls match. This was fun. From the like her Karana to the outside. Um Ray tried in a code red, but um, almost pretty much dodging it. Uh, dude, I'm trying to name all the spots that happened, which this was just crazy. Like, the biggest spots out of this match, I will name though, was with the first fall with almost hitting a like a pretty much on the top row because Ray tried to go for a Hurricane Rana and everything, but almost lifted him up, stood on the top rope, and hit him with a sit down avalanche power bomb for the first fall. Insane to watch that. That, that was just great. Right, and then Rey Mysterio, um, you know, pretty much coming back for the second fall because almost tried hitting the more power bombs, but Rey pretty much reversed into a power bomb into a Canadian destroyer again, actually getting the win. All right, he actually got the second win right here, hit it a wicked Canadian destroyer, not making a regular move, actually finishing this time for a pinfall. The Canadian destroyer always looks great, and. Of course, the crowd did go nuts for it when he hit the Canadian Destroyer on him. Pretty much both guys are one-on-one -on -one again. Too many commercials in this match because when they came back, Ray pretty much um, threw almost outside the ring when he dodged him. Then, you know, when Ray does that slide thing, almost going to a splash, this looked freaking cool, okay? The dude slides over Almas's back and hits him with a like a, almost like a sunset power bomb into the barricade. That looked cool, okay? Like him just sliding into it. Sunset power bomb barricade. Awesome. Going then going for a West Coast pop for a near fall then. Crowd chance six one nine then. But um uh, pretty much then, um, what was the next thing? It was kind of crazy also because they pretty much get to the outside ring. Um because yeah, almost was on the apron. Ray tries to go for another But, um, like I said, I got, I got this mute button here for a reason. I like this mute button. <laughs> like I said, when my phone rings, you can't see who I'm talking to or what I'm talking to or why the mics go out. But, like I said, this match, uh, like I said, pretty much coming into the outside then. Ray tried to hit another sunset power bomb. Uh, pretty much almost like dodges it. Like he hits the power bomb, but... Almost dodges into a like a backflip. Ray goes up on him. Almost catches him. Pretty much power bombs him into the post on you know to the outside of the ring. Spine first. Throws him back in the ring. Hammerlock DDT. Ray gets his foot on the ropes. Pretty much for a great two count out there. 
almost then pretty much went for an armbar then Ray dodged it and pretty much went to the top rope which this is where he they did botch this is like the biggest botch of the entire match okay Ray looked like he was gonna do that like you know that almost like that snap almost like a like a not like a like a snap I would say but like um you know a super crucifix bomb like he did last week like just charging him into the ground and stuff but he really did botched it and just went for a roll up then after that but it was supposed to be like that snap crucifix crucifix bomb he did last week for like a pinfall but it didn't happen but Ray pretty much hit a springboard hit a head scissors then hits the 619 about to go for the splash but Samoa Joe then comes out power bombs him into the apron and um yeah, he power bombs into the apron, pretty much ended up in a DQ. This was still a great match. I wouldn't have done with the whole interference thing, but Samoa Joe then pretty much, like I said, he power bombs Ray, throw Almas out the ring, chokes out Ray in the ring, and then pretty much says, this is a statement I made, because then he said, I'm going to win the Royal Rumble, and that my name is Samoa Joe, and look what just happened. I just got RKO'd. Randy Orton comes out of nowhere, I guess, so maybe it's send the crowd home happy, because I don't know why Orton or Samoa Joe was out here to begin with. I don't know why we need all this, but the crowd popped for Orton. RKO out of nowhere, holding up at three, thinking he may win the Royal Rumble three times this, you know, three times this time if he can get, go for the third but it did look cool because like he he came out of nowhere okay you never saw it coming and I'm, I'm not gonna lie I popped for it because I'm like RKO you just didn't see that stuff coming okay he just hits it out of nowhere RKO it was just insane okay I, I loved it all right but overall the match of Rey Mysterio and Amis was just great in general you thought last week was great this one was better okay some people think it's still probably gonna be for a US title feud I'm not really 100% sure if that will go down or not if it'll be for a US title because what do you got the US title going for now Rusev versus Nakamura in the kickoff show you only had a couple weeks build or probably one week build you haven't seen these guys on TV in two weeks but they're on a pre-show in, in a way it's kind of sad for Nakamura when I think about now about now last week this man i mean last year this man won the royal rumble match this year the man's relegated to the freaking pre-show how th this is sad when you think about it but then again i don't know when this guy's contract coming up i still think he may go back to new japan for all i know he may go to all elite wrestling if he doesn't want to move his family back to japan if that story is true and that also the cruiserweights are back on the pre-show again uh, what, uh, Buddy Murphy, Kalisto, Hideo Tommy, and Kier Tozawa in a fatal four-way match, so expect that to go down, it should be really good, though, I guess they got Aiden English on commentary now, they don't, they don't know what else to do with the guy nowadays, might as well put him out there, because if you know if you release him, he'll go to AEW, and WWE just don't, or they just find anybody that has nothing to do, and find them something to do right now, so they don't go to AEW, when I think about it, because I forgot Aiden English was even still on the roster at one point, to be honest, okay, but overall, this was a really great episode of SmackDown, like, all right, Ray and Almas killed it. Ray just being better than he has ever been on SmackDown ever since he came back. Almas actually getting a push here again. But I love the two out of three falls match. The AJ and Brian promo was really good. The beginning promo with, you know, Becky and Charlotte out there was pretty good too. Um, all, uh, Ali and, um, Joe was pretty good out there. I did like that match also. Uh, some stuff I did not like. I did not like the Mandy Rose and Naomi match. I still think the finish was weak. Um, the whole Cesaro and Miz was kind of whatever, but it pretty much told me that, you know, other than that whole power bomb Shane on the announce table looked pretty cool. This pretty much is telling me that Shane McMahon and the Miz are actually going to win the tag team championships this Sunday at the Rumble. Let's step above all the other tag teams and bury them, of course, but I feel like that may really happen. And I did like New Day's promo in the back. That was pretty funny there also. So I will say that. But like I said, a very great go-home show. Way better than what I saw on Monday Night Raw last night. It was just a fun show, okay? I loved it. I like what was going on. It was great. So, yeah. That's my review of SmackDown tonight. I am out of here. Comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think about this show. We got a lot going down this weekend for the Royal Rumble. NXT Saturday. It's going to be a lot. So, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at HoodedNight890. So, once again, you know it's me. It's me, the HWD. Coming here with the news and the reviews. You know what I do. You know what's going down. This is SmackDown. Okay? I'm done. I'm out of here. Check out past reviews. Monday Night Raw. Impact. New Japan. Whatever. Just check it out. Still going for the audio form also. Still trying to do that whole podcast thing. That's why I do a little bit of video. Do a little bit of audio. You never know what goes on from here. So I'm out of here. So keep it cool. Keep it tranquilo. I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Tell me what you thought about SmackDown tonight. See you later. Peace.